Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the daily Bible study for the Sealang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If you've never been to our building, you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines. We are located in Bayan or city proper of Silang Cavite, Philippines, which puts us about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport, located in Metro Manila. We are glad that you are with us, and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you today. Joseph, you got your ball pen handy? Okay. Prayer request, Cora? You and you, mom. Continuous prayer um, for healing, for Ernest, Claudio, Rosella, Kelly, and we're at Rolick there. He had an accident. Jesse, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good is morning. it next? My, my prayer request is good sit. health for me, sit, good sit. health for my mother, more understanding, and that's all. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gladys. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning to everyone. My prayer request is continue healing for my aunt and comforting my auntie. Uh, but knowledge and wisdom for my kids and protection for everyone. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ms. Giselle, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to everyone. Um, my prayer request is um, thanksgiving to all the blessing. Uh, more wisdom and knowledge because I failed, sir, on the uh, interview. Uh, I mean, and uh, enlightenment for my in laws. Okay. Ms. Wilma, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Um, continuous prayer for my sister in law. How's she doing today? Uh, She's good, sir. Okay. Mary, good morning. Prayer request, sir. Uh, knowledge and wisdom, sir. Thank okay. you. Marvin, good morning. Good morning, everyone. A prayer request still for my teacher. I'll be a uh, continuous healing for her. And as per Kuya Rolik, uh, we still praise God that He never um abandoned him. His uh, he still uh, he doesn't have major injury. So still praise for that. Okay. Fred, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I have um with Beverly, we have our second Bible study uh, at one o'clock today. So okay. I want to keep her in, in our prayers. Yeah. Okay. By the way, Fred, uh, you're aware that uh, Mary and Jesse were baptized this week, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Congrats. Yeah. Miss Vanessa, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mom Cora. Uh, sir, as always, Thanksgiving and thankful for the great the protection and guidance for my family especially for my mother and my sister and for the and for everyone here sir in our congregation okay joseph what's on your mind I would like to pray for the allergies of my daughter, sir. That's okay. Give us a prayer, brother.
let's bow our head. Kind and gracious Lord, you are the creator of all things, the author of life and our loving Father. We thank you for your faithful presence in our lives and we thank you for the word of God. We also have special prayer, prayers, O oh Lord, especially for Mom Cora. Prayer for these people, healing for them, for our, pre our preachers, Sir Ernest, and for these people, Claudio, Rosella, Kelly, and especially to our brother, Rolik. He had an accident this day. We hope that he will be better, O oh Lord, for brother Jesse. He asked for good health for his mother and for him, for Sister Gladys, continuous healing for her aunt, O oh Lord. And she asked also for the knowledge and wisdom for her kids and for Sister Giselle. Thanksgiving for the blessings that she received every day, O Lord, and she asked also for wisdom and knowledge and for enlightenment for her in-laws. For Sister Wilma, continuous healing for her sister-in-law, O Lord. For Sister Mary, she asked for knowledge and wisdom and also, O Lord, protection. For our brother Marvin, she asked for the healing for his teacher, Abby, O Lord, always provide a good, a, a good health. And for Sir Fred, a successful second Bible study, O Lord, that he about to conduct this day for Sister Vanessa. She asked for the protection, guidance, especially for he, for her mother and her sister and also we wanted to thank you for all the blessings that they received i also pray for you oh lord for the health of my family especially to my daughter she, her allergy and may you give always a protection to my family oh lord we ask this in the name of lord jesus christ amen amen all right everybody we have kind of finished our overview of Hebrews. Now let's take a look at the text. Uh, open to Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews chapter one. Jesse, give us verse one, please. Jesse, you're muted, brother. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Yes. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth and different ways, God spoke of all to our forefather in in and by the prophets jesse what translation are you reading is that an niv amplified translation okay uh i like the esv better than the amplified amplified is not a bad bible it's a good translation but i like the esv better um uh, Joseph, give us verse two, please. Thank you, Mark. Verse and verse two. But in these last days, he he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the the heir of all, of all things, through whom also he created the world. Okay, verse three, Gladys. And verse three. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he uploads the universe by the word of his power. 
after making for a vacation for sin, she, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on the high. Okay. In what ways, according to Hebrews chapter one and verse one, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. How are some of the ways that God spoke to the prophets? Jesse? Yes, sir. How did God speak to the prophets? By the angels, sir. Okay, and Cora. All... You're muted, sweetheart. Are are you asking for like Old Testament? Yes. Or... Well, that's apparently what is being referenced in Hebrews chapter one and verse one. I would say that um, God speaks to the prophets uh, through the clouds. Okay. Joseph? Sir? How did God speak to the prophets? List, give me one of the ways. Through dreams, sir. Dream. He did. Who said that? Very, that's a good answer. Dream. That is one. Yes. Joseph, give me one. Through um, message. Through message. Okay. Gladys? Also, I know, sir, dreams, sir. Dreams only? Okay. Yes, sir. Vision, sir. Vision. Visions, yes. Very good answer. Good answer, Jesse. Giselle? Uh, sir, by the rock. <laughs> okay. Uh, by Wilma? Uh, sir, through the through nature. Through nature, okay. Mary, you gave us an answer. Marvin, through the plagues, sir. Plagues. 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 God spoke through the plagues. That's true. Marvin, uh, just like um, Uh, what do you, what's the name of that? Sir, what's the name of that person which God gave the Ten Commandments? Moses. Moses. So um, God spoke to him directly in Mount Sinai. In Mount Sinai, he did. Miss Vanessa? Oh, sir, in our everyday living with someone, uh, some person that we encounter every day. Okay. Fred? Yes, he still he spoke through a donkey. He spoke through a burning bush, and all the the uh, things that have been mentioned. He, he, he also spoke through the dreams of other people. When the ba baker and the wine taster, who had the dream when they asked Joseph to interpret it, it was their dream. It was their. It was not his dream. It was their dream. Same thing happened with Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, many ways that God spoke by direct revelation. He absolutely did. He spoke in many ways. Now, going back to verse three, verses one to three, staying on our text right there. What phrase can you use to show that Christ is our prophet, our priest, and our king in verses one to through three of Hebrews chapter one. The exact imprint of his nature. Very good. He upholds the universe by the power, word of his power, right? And then he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Good answer, Marvin. Good job. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13, Korah. 
in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13, it says, And to which of the angels he has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make you enemies a footstool of your foot, feet. Until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, for your right? Feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how exactly are the enemies of Christ going to be made his footstool? When he, when he step on him just like the snake. Okay. Marvin? Um, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Uh, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Very good. Good answer, Marvin. Fred. Um, one way uh, is through um, John 12, 48. It says, It was John twelve. I mean, let's see it. Come back to me one one moment. Okay, Wilma. I don't know, sir. You don't know? No. Cora. Um, I just said about the God making it as a serpent. Okay. Where'd Vanessa go? There she is. Now we can oh, also see. Ready? Go ahead, Fred. John 12, I said 48. John 12, 48. And it reads um, There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That very word which I spoke will condemn him at the last day. Okay. So uh, through God's word, through God's word. true. So God's word will, they will be placed as his footstool under his rule. Uh, we just got done reading Hebrews chapter one and verse three, right? We can also look at uh, Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 18 through 20. We can look at Mark chapter 16. All authority has been given to God. Go ahead. 10 to 8 what? 18 to 20. What's 2818? Tell us, Cora. Uh, I thought you're asking someone else. Uh, it says... Um, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. 18, that, the that you went all the way to age. 20, but 18 gives us the answer, all authority, right? Mm -hmm. uh, John twelve forty eight. that was a good one. I like that one, Fred. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Uh, Giselle, start us in verse 1, please. 
Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Verse 2, please, Wilma. Verse 2. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable in every transgression, or disobedience received a just retribution. So, retribution. Verse 3, Marvin. Marvin's not there. Fred, Marvin. verse 3, please. I'm um, sorry. I, I, um, what, what chapter and verse? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. Okay. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, and it reads, Show, How shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard, who heard him. Okay. Verse 4, Vanessa. And verse 4, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Okay. Um, what is the danger if we neglect our salvation? What is the danger if we neglect our salvation? Miss Wilma? We will not receive eternal life. Okay. Marvin? We will be thrown into the lake of fire. Fred? Um, we will not have our name written in the book of life. Vanessa? Not receive the crown of life. Mary? Same, same. That's not allowed. What do you mean by the same? <laughs> we did not receive the crown of life, sir. Okay. Jesse. What is the danger of neglecting our salvation? Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Um, we will be perished, sir. Say it again. Speak up, please. Perished, sir. Okay, Cora. No salvation, sir. We will not enjoy life with Jesus. Life. Okay, Joseph. We will not receive the crown of life, also, sir. Gladys. I'm agree with Marvin, sir. We will go to the fire, lake of fire. You want to go swimming? No, sir. I didn't want. Not in that lake, right? Sir, okay. we will. Go ahead. Not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Giselle. Sir, you will not receive the crown of flight. Okay. Now, there's something we missed because it, came, it comes directly from the text. Lest we drift away, if we don't pay attention to our faith, to walking with Jesus, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, we can drift away. Contrary to what those who practice Calvinism would teach, you can drift away. You can lose your salvation. We need to pay attention to make sure that doesn't happen to us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, start us in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3, start us in verse 1. Mary? Therefore, the holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus an apostle and high priest of our confession. Okay, verse 2, please. Jesse? Oh, 
for for since the message declared by angels proved is that hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 uh verse 2 3 chapter, chapter 3 verse 2 okay who was faithful to him who appointed him just as moses also was faithful in all god's house okay verse 3 core verse 3 it says for G verse 3 it says for jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than moses as much more glory as the build, builder of a house has more honor than a house itself okay verse 4 please joseph in verse 4 for open parenthesis for every house is built by someone but the builder of all things is god close parenthesis Verse 5, please. Gladys? Verse 5. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the thing that were to be spoken later. Okay, and verse 6, Giselle. And verse 6. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house of indeed. We hold past our confidence and our boosting in our hope. Okay. So based on Hebrews chapter 3, why is Jesus Christ worthy of more honor than Moses? Giselle? Her, um uh she is the one who built the house of the glory okay wilma you're muted wilma for jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than moses why mm -hmm. So because maybe Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus Margaret? is not a servant, sir. He is the Very good, son. Vanessa. He's not a servant in the house. He's the son of God. He's the builder of the house, right? What now when they refer to the sir. house, what are they referring to? Go ahead. Somebody who said it. He's, Go ahead, Jesse. Sir, Jesus is the head of the church, he's the foundation. Jesus is the head of the church. That's correct. Cora. You're muted, sweetheart. What's the question? Why is Jesus worthy of more honor than Moses, according to Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 6? Well, I think because he's the builder of the house or the builder of the church. Okay. Joseph? Sir. Builder of all things. I'm sorry. Okay. Fred? What's the question? Why is Jesus worthy of more honor than Moses? Because he's deity. Okay. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8. Please, uh, Miss Wilma. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. Okay. So, what exactly are they referencing here? What was the rebellion? That were or testing that we see mentioned in Hebrews chapter three and verse eight. Fred.
a hardening of their heart. What was the rebellion? Oh, um, during um, during their their testing in the desert, when they were um, called to follow Moses, uh, many of them rebelled against Moses, hardening their heart. They did. And that rebellion was, do you remember who led the rebellion? Um, was it, uh, yeah. Uh, the brother. A Aaron? Um, no. Moses' brother? Korah. Not me. K-O-R-A-H. <laughs> Korah led That's the rebellion. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Korah led the rebellion. You are correct. <laughs> um, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1, Marvin. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. Okay. What is the rest that is promise to us two-part question what is the rest and what would prevent us from entering that rest yeah. our sin sir go ahead jesse more details please um, uh, what's the question again sir what's the what rest? is the rest that is promised to us the, and the what would prevent us from entering it the rest that is uh, described in the Bible is the one who enters the kingdom of heaven. And uh, we are separated to him through our iniquities. Okay. Cora. It says the promise of entering his rest still stands. Entering into entering to righteousness, and it will separate us because of our sin. Or okay. Joseph, there. What is the rest, and what would prevent us from entering into that rest? I don't know, sir. Okay, Gladys. Uh, entering to his stressor is we will have an uh, internal life and it not be could happen, sir, if we have a uh, sin because uh, we will not enter any sins in the Christ. Okay, yourself. You're muted, Giselle. Sir, we had to repent. Okay. Repent of what? Repent. What is the rest? Number one. Number two, what would prevent us from entering the rest? Ms. Wilma. You're still muted, Wilma. Just the obedience, sir. Okay. Disobedience, that would prevent us from entering. That's true. Marvin? The rest is the promised land that God has promised to us. And we uh, we, we will uh, not enter that rest if uh, we harden our hearts because our hearts serve as a soil we're in. If it's for... Uh, good soil uh, we will accept the word of jesus christ and we will live by it and according to matthew chapter 7 verse 13 to 14 enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter by it are many for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that lead that leads to life and those who find it are few okay bread well, well, 
um, prevent us from entering. What what is the rest? Rest and what and then what would prevent us from entering that rest? The, the rest is heaven, and what would prevent us is 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 um, disobedience. Okay, Vanessa. No, when a person disobey some of the uh, rules of God and and the believers, sir, sometimes they used to forget those good deeds that they okay. have Mary? to follow. Sir, the rest, if we are in Jesus and we prevent to go to heaven because of our transgression, sir. Okay. That is Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4 and verse 1. We saw that. Uh, we will pick up with these questions on Monday and we'll start in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. So let's stop the broadcast here.